yet known as the breakaways near Coobapedi in South Australia. Coobapedi is where they mine opal and all around here are all sorts of interesting minerals. It really is a terrific place to go collecting. The trouble is with collecting minerals, there are so many of them and they're quite baffling. What, for example, is this terrific looking stuff when you find it? Well, of course, you helped in identifying them with a book like this, but there are lots and lots of things to go through and there are tables that distill a lot of information if you know what information there is about your specimen. So some of the clues that people use when they're trying to identify minerals are these. You get a bathroom tile and you take your mineral and you scratch it across there and it leaves a streak and you determine the colour of the streak. It may not be the same as the mineral. That's important. You can also examine your specimens with a magnifying glass and that will tell you something about the crystal formation. Do they have a luster? You can compare weight. How heavy are they? All those things you can do. The trouble is hardness is a very important clue and if I pick up one rock and another they all feel about the same to me. They're all hard. And that was a problem that Friedrich Mohs dealt with when he developed his Mohs scale. It's a comparative scale of hardness of minerals. He took 10 common minerals and rated them. Number one, the softest, was talc stone. So soft we grind it into talc powder. Number 10, the hardest, was diamond. And every other mineral lies somewhere along that scale. So that on his scale, he had number two, this stuff here, gypsum. So, uh, a bit harder than talc stone, but soft enough to cut with your fingernail. Harder than that, number three, was calcite, the stuff that stalagmites are made out of. You can't cut that with your fingernail, but it will cut gypsum. Number six, a good way up the list, was this stuff, orthoclase. Almost as hard as quartz, a very common mineral, which sits at number seven. Well, it's a bit hard to compile your own list of these things, or at least your own collection of them. It's hard to get orthoclase, and diamonds are not too common. They don't let you take them around in the field. So you can do a sort of collection of testing equipment with things around the house. Number one, like talc, is dry soap. Cut easily by your fingernail, which is two and a half. A little bit harder than dry plaster of Paris, just like gypsum, at two. A copper coin, for example, is four. And a penknife blade, which will scratch it, is about five and a half. Glass is five and a half to six, and a steel file is six and a half, nearly as good as quartz at seven. The trouble is with opal, poor old opal comes off badly. Quartz is a nice hard rock, and like it, agate and chrysoprase, all those things, are seven. They take a high polish and they don't wear in a ring. But opal is only about five and a half to six. It's so soft that it wears badly in a ring and it can crack and split. So the people who cut and polish opal for gemstones have little tricks to deal with that. Now sometimes opal comes in chunks that are so lovely you just want to bring out the natural beauty of the stone. That's the sort of chunk I mean. Lovely opal, full of colour. And there you want to waste as little as possible. So you take that chunk and using a diamond saw cut it into little rectangular blocks. The diamond saw is actually a circular sheet of steel and in the edge are embedded tiny diamonds. As you can see, they whip their way through opal in no time at all. Well, the rectangular blocks have to be ground, and so you don't wear your fingers away, you stick them onto handles. Here we are. That's opal stuck onto these dop sticks, as they're called. The dop stick is really just a manipulating tool so you can press the opal up against a grinding wheel. Now, opal is very easily destroyed by heat, and grinding can produce a lot of it. So running over the surface of the wheel is water. That keeps things cool and assists in the grinding of the stone. And each stone is cut into the shape that suits it best. With opals, it's often an oval cabochon like that. But it can be something like a pear shape or even an irregular shape like that. Whatever suits the stone. Well, opal often doesn't come in chunks. It comes in layers or seams within the rock. That's perfectly good opal. It's got lovely colours in it, but it's too thin to be used as a gemstone on its own. So you don't cut it into a solid, you make it into a doublet a two-layered presentation. You have to stick it onto a backing sheet. And there we are. That's the sheet like this. It's actually microscopic glass, blackened and roughened on one side to provide a grip for the glue. So that onto that sheet would be stuck the layers of opal which have been extracted by grinding the rock away. There they are, glued on there to produce a doublet. You simply cut it up and grind it much as you did with a solid. But once again, the outer surface of the opal meets the outside world and it wears easily. So if you want something tougher than that, you go to a triplet. Now with a triplet, you take a chunk of opal and you saw it into many slices. That, believe it or not, is a saw blade, or really more than a hundred saw blades. By taking a chunk of opal 
and working these blades across it, flooding it with water and uh, abrasive powder, these blades can cut that block into many, many very thin slices of opal, as thin as the pages in a telephone directory. Now, of course, those slices would be very fragile, so each of them has to be stuck onto the backing sheet too. There you are, backing sheet and very thin layer of opal. But all the color is preserved. If I wet that, you'll see that it comes up a beautiful blue. Now that, of course, would wear or break in no time, so it has to be protected with quartz. These are quartz caps. Each one is really a piece of quartz that's been ground rather like a gemstone in its own right. But by taking that, and gluing the cap onto the surface of that opal, you really make an opal sandwich. Backing layer, opal, and quartz. The black brings out the color of the opal and allows you then to marry the beauty of opal with the hardness of quartz on top.